Know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. Um, and I start off with that because tonight was supposed to be my night to share my testimony and tell you all about young life, but I feel like I need to let you know ahead of time what's going on in my life. Right now I have a nephew in Easley, and he's in the hospital, and we really don't know what's going to happen. Um, we meet here early every Monday as leaders to pray and to prepare for y'all. And I told them what was going on, and I told Eddie earlier in the day, and he let them know so they could all pray for him. And as we finished the meeting, I got a note that things had declined, and he had seizures, and he was unresponsive, and everything. So if I, if I get a little bit like I am now worked over, that's, that's why. Because I'm really having to rely on God right now. Because no matter what happens, I know that He's got a plan. And I may never understand that plan fully. There's been a lot of things in my life that have happened to me that I don't understand. But I know one way or another, He's going to use them for His own good. Um, I was born in Greenwood and adopted and raised here in Newberry, South Carolina. Um, don't know much at all about my biological family. I do know I have older siblings. Um, and I have an old, a younger brother who is adopted also. So if you ask me if I'm the oldest or the youngest, it depends on which family you're referring to. I'm the youngest of my biological, but the oldest of my adopted family. And I could not ask for better parents um, and a better family to have raised me. Um, went to church right up the street at Abilene. Um, the service that's held here now is actually part of that church on Sundays. There are things that have happened in my life that many people shouldn't experience and that many people should not have to know about. Um, when I was in elementary school, I was molested by a babysitter. Um, when I was in college, um, I was actually uh, drugged and raped by a female. Um, a lot of people don't think that guys can be raped, but you can't. And it's not something like, oh, you do, that's awesome. It's, it's awful. Um, it messes with your head. And it actually, in my life, probably pushed my relationship and my, my view on, on religion and God more than anything else. Because I thought, you know, how does something like this happen to me? Um, you know, what, what good can come of this for something like this? Because I was doing my best to, to save myself from marriage. And in my view, when that happened, that, that ruined that for me. Um, and I really did take a step back. It was my freshman year of college. I took a step back and, and thought to myself, what is, is God's purpose for this? Why, why did this happen to me? I don't know. But I know that through the help of Christian friends and staying in my Bible and looking back on people that I knew who used to lead young life. 14 years ago, I was a freshman out there. I realized that it didn't destroy my life, but it gave me a marker to run off of. Um, when I left college, I, uh, I still wasn't totally right with God. And as I got employed, I worked at a psychiatric facility, and my coworkers there were anything but Christian. They knew about God and they quote unquote believed in God, but that doesn't make you a Christian. And because of where I stood and how I was weak, I made a lot of bad decisions. I hung out with the wrong crowd and basically lived a life that I've been raised not to live. Lived a life that did not glorify God. And I was miserable. Whether I realized it or not, looking back, hindsight 2020, I was miserable. I tried to fill my life with hanging out at bars with the co-workers. I tried to fill my life with, you know, telling bad jokes. You know, anything that you can think of, except for drugs, because I never did drugs. But I tried to fill this, this void in me from where I had stepped away with earthly things. And it doesn't work. It really doesn't. Um, while working there, I met who is now my wife. And her, along with other very influential people in my life, kind of smacked me upside the back of the head and said, Hey, look, you're not going to be happy. You're never going to be happy. You're going to keep making mistakes if you don't straighten out. And at that point, I said, Look, it's time for me to get back. And I got back 
into God, into Jesus. And I'd love to say, and then everything's happy, okay, and nothing ever went wrong, but that's not the way it works. You know, life is life, the world is the world. But I was at peace. Young life. What is young life? What can it do? I myself am a huge nerd. I'm a big, huge geek. Not popular by any means in school. I was a weird kid who wore the weird stuff that wasn't cool, had the weird hair, big old geeky glasses, and everybody knew because I was so off the wall. But here's the cool thing. The leaders here at Young Life, and a lot of y'all, are Christians. And you follow Jesus' way. And do you know what that means? That means it doesn't matter who you are, you're accepted. I knew every Monday when I came in through these doors, and it was a totally different looking place back then. But when I came in through these doors, I knew every Monday I could come in exactly as I was and I would be accepted because everybody loved me for who I was just like Jesus loves us all for who we are as it is. So you ask what's young life. Everything you've seen tonight is young life. The fun, the games, the songs, the interactions, the community is all young life. But the heart of young life, the thing that makes it happen, the thing that brings all us strange adults to come hang out with a bunch of high schoolers together is the love in our hearts for Jesus Christ and for y'all. That's why we're here. A lot of y'all come and you enjoy everything. You don't like, you know, oh, they're going to do a speech, I'll just kind of pay. We don't mind. We want you to come. We want you to be here. And we want you to get to know Jesus, if not through what we say here, by seeing us throughout this time. Um, I'm going to cut it short. I really appreciate y'all y'all being quiet and listening. And I appreciate y'all giving me support. Because whether you realize or not, from out there, I can feel the support. So I'm going to say... <laughs> I'm going to say a closing prayer. And then that will be the end of the club, okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, again, thank You so much um, for this opportunity. Um, and I just pray, Father, for anybody here who's suffering in any way, um, who's concerned or worried about anything, that, uh, that You be with them and You comfort them whether they know You or not. And I ask, Lord, that the people here who don't know You, that You touch their hearts so Jesus can enter in and they do get to know You. Um, Thank you so much for this great group of kids and for these leaders. And thank you so much for this time together to enjoy ourselves and just the ability to be who we are without worry. Um, we come to you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.